Hey, what is going on YouTube? This is Levi from Bayfoils. And today we got a special video. We are unboxing the very first flight scooters in North America. We're super lucky here that I'm literally 15 minutes drive, 15, 20 minutes drive. Well, it depends on traffic. From the Flight Board USA headquarters. So I just picked these up. They're hot off the press. If you like these videos, like and subscribe. Again, we're gonna just do an unboxing today. We'll have some on-water video at another time. But let's get into it. Shoo! This is our nice case. This is our new security fob for the scooters because the controller stays mounted in the handle. This is what lets you know, uh, or lets the board know that you fell off the scooter. Pretty sweet. Looks a little bigger. Actually, you know what? This looks about the same size as the Series 1 inflatable box. Bigger than the Series 2, but not by a lot. <laughs> Always when we're trying to record. Yeah. So now that we got everything unpacked, you know what the first thing we're gonna do is? We're gonna read the manual. Boom. Flight scooter user guide. Guys, we're nerds here. We love reading manuals. Don't try to just put it together without reading. So we're just gonna flip through here. Okay, I read it, cool. Take a look at our kit. So here we got our 500 uh, stabilizer. We got our Cruiser 1800. Now, Flight Board, when we went to go pick this up, Flight Board recommended us to use this particular setup because the uh, new software that's out with the flight scooter is specifically tuned for this set. What that means is they, they tuned the roll cutoff and both the pitch cutoff to be dialed in to how this set works. Because uh, with the new uh, sensor that you wear, it's a little bit different, uh, your orientation of where your sensor is. It's tuned specifically for this setup, so we trusted their recommendation and that's the setup we're gonna use today. So that's our wings. We got our board here, this bladder. It looks slightly larger than the S1, uh, inflatable bladder. It for sure has better handles now. Um, these silicone handles are going to be more robust than their old nylon webbing. Then we have our nugget right here. Um, this is your insert for where the uh, handlebars go in. Just be careful when you're taking this out. When we first unboxed it, it was in there pretty tight, but um, just use like a little butter knife or a small flathead screwdriver to get it in there and pop it up. Um, it's all reinforced plastic in there, so don't feel bad about, you know, damaging anything, but it will be on there pretty tight. And then we have our, our handles and our foil. This is pretty nice. We can see it's all anodized aluminum. The handles have a nice grip like you would see on an e-scooter throttle right here. We're gonna, first we're gonna inflate the board, get the nugget in there, and then we're gonna put the handlebars and foil on. 
Now for our favorite part, getting the nugget in the bladder. It takes a little bit of elbow grease, but with the right technique, you can get it in there without a lot of headache. Understand what they can't shift the Ooh. thing already assembled. <laughs> there you go. That's looking promising. Yay! A uh, couple tricks from experience. Always start with the board upside down so that the deck, the underside is facing up. You get the front end in first. That's the side that has kind of a little trapezoidal shape. Get one corner in first and then work on that final corner. A couple of things that makes it really a lot easier, lay the board out in the sun a little bit to heat up this material. This material is really stretchy, it is really durable, so you can really crank on it to really stretch it on there. It's designed to stretch. All we gotta do is pump it up, put the foil in, put the mast on, and we're set. Two very boring minutes later. What do they say? 15? <laughs> <laughs> now that we've got it pumped up to 16 PSI, we're going to install the mast first. Now if you're familiar with flight boards and the assembly, you can skip forward past this part. But if this is your first time, keep watching as we'll show you how to get the mast on there nice and properly. So inside your toolkit that will come with your flight board here, you'll have this little bag. And in the back here will be your screws for your mast and your stabilizer tailpiece. We want the ones in the bag that says flight box flange. It's four M6 uh, 20 millimeter screws. We also want to locate our Allen wrench. And then we're going to want to locate some Tef gel. We want to apply the Tef gel to our screw threads uh, every time we assemble. Uh, this is both an anti-seize uh, and an anti-corrosion lubricant. So, especially if you're a salt water uh, user, you're gonna wanna make sure your screws uh, are, are pretty coated with Tef Gel regularly. Now that we got our screws all Tef Gel, we wanna make sure our O-ring in the flange here is nice and flat. So next we're gonna take the mast upside down so that the jet and the wings are facing up and make sure the cables point towards the nose of the board. And then try to set it in nice and flat so you don't disturb that O-ring. Putting the screws in, you wanna make sure you do uh, cross bolts first. That way it maintains the pressure on the O-ring nice and evenly distributed. And as far as tightening the bolts here, you know, just hand tight is fine. It doesn't have to be like super crazy tight and soft. So you don't want to strip the heads. The countersunk holes are facing up. Don't make, make sure you're not putting it on backwards.
if you are using the 500 stabilizer make sure you have the 500 stabilizer pack it's a set of three I believe it's a zero a one and a two you can see right here they'll say 500 on it the position of the shim with the 500 stabilizer is different so we need a different um, contour I'm an experienced writer, so I'm using the zero shim because I want the minimum amount of drag and downward force. If you're a beginner, the one or two, you're more stable, but you won't have as much top end speed. If you want to learn more about wings and stabilizers and shims, you can check this video right here. Now, really important, try not to rock it on the wings. It's not really good for the mast. Try to lift it, set it down on the nose, then set it down on the, the wing. We're ready to put in our handlebars here. Make sure it's, uh, it's got a round part on the front so you don't put it in backwards. Unlock the little twist knob here. Put it in all the way until you see the little nub past it. Turn it right to lock it in place, and it's in there. The controller, same thing. There's a knob in the front here. Push it all the way in. It'll undo the latch here. I don't know if we can see it from the video, but there's a little uh, latch that grabs the bottom of the controller. Set the nose in first. Push the latch nice and hard, and it'll be in place. We're ready to go. We're ready to go down to the dock get the battery in and get on the water. Now that we're all set up, we're near our water location. The last two steps that we need to do is get the battery in there and pair the controller. If you haven't paired the controller, you can check out our video on pairing your controller right here. I hope I pointed at the right spot. But anyways, battery goes in the hatch. Make sure you put it label facing up. Connect your terminals. Push down all the way until they click and then twist the battery retention lever so that it holds that battery into place. At this point we would do our pairing but the, this setup is already paired so we're just going to get set up. Press the mode button and the plus button at the same time for five seconds to turn it on. Pull the throttle one time. If you've ridden a flight board you already know how to pair it but pull the trigger and release it one time quickly. Press the minus button then you have the countdown and pull the throttle during the countdown and you'll start going. Make sure one extra piece of equipment that's essential for our scooter is our tag. This lets the board know when we fall off of it. Because uh, normally with the controller, when you fall in the water, that's when it knows you're off the board and disconnects. This sensor replaces that function. Really important, don't not use it. Bam. Last but certainly not least, our safety equipment. How I like to get it out on the water is I grab the handle and I grab the mast, position it so I can get the foil in the water, and then just set it down nice and easy. And from this point, you can either get on on your knees and then stand, or be careful when you step over. Let me get it started. And we're set.
Hey y'all, sorry this video ran so long, didn't know that there was a lot to talk about while we were unboxing. Uh, part 2 with the actual on the water video is coming soon. You can see some of it that we got right here. We had drone and on the water filming. That'll be released shortly, so thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the part 2 video and we'll see you on the water. Shoot! Thank you.